manually. Okay, next question. I have a file in external location S3. As soon as I placed a file needs to load into Snowflake table. Okay, so to load the data from S3 to Snowflake table directly, we have to use the snow pipe uh, with auto ingest uh, option equal to true. Then only it will load the data uh, from the snow uh, from the S3 to Snowflake uh, on real time. So first we need to create the external stage uh, for this one. So in the external stage, we need to define the S3 uh, location where actually our files will get uh, stored. Next, we need to create the snow pipe uh, with auto ingest parameter equal to true, uh, which can uh, load the data from the external stage to the uh, exact uh, target location and uh, next we need to configure the s3 event notification like uh, uh, s3 once the file has created we have to create a sns topic uh, sorry sqs or sns topic and once uh, the file has loaded it will trigger a notification to the sqs or sns and uh, we we have to configure the uh, snowflake uh, uh, snow pipe to read the uh, sns or sqs topic and access the file so for this we need to uh, give the uh, permissions on the iam level and the bucket uh, access level uh, so th this is the complete uh, setup that we have to do so once we done this one we can test and we can monitor and uh, manage the snow pipe using the uh, snow pipe load history table so we have a snow pipe load history table using that uh, we can filter our pipeline name and we can see what are all the previous runs and whether it's success or failure all that information we can find okay next question load only valid records during copy statement so to load only valid records uh, into the table using the copy statement uh, you have to use the validation mode parameter so this validation mode parameter actually we have to use it in the uh, we have to use when we are copying from the stage to the table and validation mode equal to we can set the return rows so this actually uh, return all rows produced by the query that includes any errors uh, that is detected during this validation so out of of these rows we can filter only the valid records and we can load that valid records to the uh, table so that we using uh, uh, that can do by using the subquery uh, uh, by using the subquery on top of the table and we can uh, load the data to the target table so once the data has loaded to the target uh, location we can see the you know uh, execution of the copy statement using the copy and the history to see is there any issues in the copy statement or not if not we can directly validate the rows uh, in the table using the validate uh, function so this is how we can load the only va invalid records to your target table in the snowflake okay next question view to check storage of a table okay so to know the table size in snowflake uh, we have a view uh, table storage matrix view so using that view we can able to uh, get to know uh, the uh, minor details of a table information like active bytes deleted bytes time travel bytes and even a fail safe of bytes as well so this you can query like snowflake uh, dot account uses that table storage matrix and we have to filter your uh, table name so this is the one way and uh, here the all the information will be available in the bytes if you wanted to in the if you wanted to convert to mb or gb or tb you can uh, convert using the 1025 slash 1024 uh, annotation and uh, that's the one way and the second way also uh, second way by using the information schema also will get to know in the information schema we have a table something like a tables table so if, if by using the tables table it also has a word uh, column something like a bytes it will store the actual byte of the table so we can uh, sum up all the bytes based on the schema and the table name and uh, we can uh, group by uh, you know we can we can do that group by and we can round up with the uh, conversion to the mb and gb and that also we can able to see so these are the two methods we can use to check the uh, file size uh, sorry table size of a snowflake okay next question does secure materialized view occupy storage uh, yes, yeah, secured uh, uh, materialized view will occupy the storage because uh, it is a materialized view which is nothing but a pre-computed uh, result that it can store. So since it has to store the pre-computed result, it will use some memory and uh, it will use the memory uh, to store the data. And it is a secured way that it can store means only authorized users can access the data to protecting the sensitive uh, information. So yeah, it can use and uh, the cost also increases like the storage costs in the physical location and also the the memory that it is occupied by the cache for uh, you know uh, ca cache when the query is executed okay next question can we perform dmls on materialized view uh, 
Uh, no, we can't uh, perform the DML operations like insert, update, delete uh, directly on materialized views. So materialized view is something that it is a uh, it is a result uh, of some query that it is stored in some physical location. So this is the database object and uh, we can't perform the DML operation means we can't directly uh, insert the data to the materialized view like a table and also we can't update and we can't uh, delete too. But if you want, we can uh, do the refresh uh, that will again will execute the query and it will uh, store the data in the uh, update the data in the physical uh, location so the major purpose of this materialized view is to uh, read the data from a uh, from complex uh, query in a pre-computed manner with a fast access okay next question does dmls are auto committed in snowflake uh, yes, in Snowflake, uh, by default, uh, all the DML operations are auto committed. Uh, this is by uh, default uh, in the Snowflake. So whenever you do any of the insert, update, delete uh, operations, if the operation succeeded, it will be auto commit. If the operation failed, it will roll back to the previous uh, state. So this uh, auto commit mechanism can handle using the session level. Like we can use like alter session uh, set, uh, set auto commit equal to true or false. Like is by default, it is true if you want to make it to false you can uh, false it and you can execute the dml operations but by default it will be auto committed uh, automatically committed okay next question can materials views can be created on multiple tables uh, in snowflake like uh, materialized views cannot be created directly on uh, multiple tables but we can uh, we can create by using the complex query with the multiple joins and aggregations and other stuff but directly ac uh, accessing the multiple tables are not uh, supported like materialized views are designed to optimize the performance queries uh, based on a single source uh, that includes like uh, uh, base table or uh, you know complex query that involves the multiple uh, joins and if you want to query we can query the multiple tables uh, something like a complex query that you can use and we can generate but uh, the, but that it can treat it as only one source uh, but uh, if you wanted to create on multiple tables so uh, I, I don't think that that can work in the snowflake okay next question how to implement cdc uh, to implement the CDC change data capture in Snowflake, uh, we can use the uh, Snowflake streams. So this feature actually, uh, you know, can help you to track and uh, capture the changes uh, that was happened over uh, on the table uh, using the operations like insert, update, and delete uh, made to the table in a real time, and uh, it will sync up with the uh, table. Like uh, we have to create the stream on top of uh, some base table for which the table that you wanted to uh, see the CDC operations and then we have to load the data to the, some other table to track all these changes and uh, load it into the target table that will be uh, taken or to do for the further uh, operation so to handle this one we can create a, a task that will actually move all the cdc data from the stream to a, a table and uh, so streams are basically uh, for this purpose only it will create some extra columns on the uh, uh, table like uh, you know it will create the metadata action columns like metadata action insert and update uh, uh, kind of uh, values okay next question what is the default retention time of snowflake tables so the default retention period on the snowflake table will be uh, depend on the edition like if it is a standard edition uh, it is like uh, one day uh, so that is nothing but a 24 hours but in case of the enterprise edition and the above versions right so it will be we can configure like 0 to 90 days that we can configure and for other tables like transient and temporary tables it will be like hardly 0 to uh, one days and uh, we can also set this retention period using the uh, data retention time in uh, days uh, configuration so this can be uh, done by the users with have an account admin uh, access. Okay, next question. Which constraints Snowflake enforces? Snowflake support the multiple uh, constraints uh, uh, for the data integrity and uh, consistency. Uh, it can support the not null, primary key, unique, foreign key constraints. And uh, for the coming to the enforces, Snowflake can enforce only not null constraints, like ensure that uh, column cannot be the uh, null value. If you are trying to update a value with a null or uh, insert a value with a null for the not null columns, uh, so it will actually throw an error. Remaining all other cases, like primary key, unique key, foreign key, and all, though it has a constraints, it do not enforce those constraints. This is for the modeling uh, purpose only. Okay, next question. Does cloned object will have storage? 
okay so in snowflake when when you clone an a object in a snowflake anything like you know table schema database uh, it it uses a feature called zero copy cloning which means it do not copy the data actually from original location to other uh, location instead it will reference the same uh, location at initial but it will create the different uh, metadata so it will take the current snapshot of the original uh, source so when when uh, so the so at the initial step you do not occupy any of the storage location whenever whenever you clone any object or uh, any database but when you start doing the modifications once you cloned and when you start doing the modifications or changes to the original table it will uh, start you know uh, creating the uh, snowflake files under the hood so for that files it will start uh, storing the storage uh, uh, storage uh, storage uses and for that it will incur some extra cost uh, as well so usually like on the first time it do not uh, it just the feature something like a zero copy cloning from the from there onwards if you do any of the uh, you know actions or transformations or any operations that you performed on the cloned object that will be created as a new storage okay next question how to check does stream has data or not uh, to check that uh, whether the stream is empty or it has some data we can use the built-in uh, function which is nothing but uh, system dollar uh, stream has data so this function can give you uh, though in this function we need to pass the stream name as a argument and if you pass it will tell you whether it has a data or not by using the true or false uh, uh, returns if it is true that means that it has the data if it is false it do not have any data okay next question how to check time travel uh, to check the uh, data retention period we can use the uh, keyword uh, like configuration like data retention time in days uh, in the table so we can use the function something like a show parameters uh, like uh, data retention time in days in a table and we can give you the table name so this can actually give you the retention period and uh, and using the uh, to access any time travel uh, feature we can use the utter uh, before uh, uh, statements uh, like you know before uh, comments so using using that commands uh, we can able to access the time travel or uh, as of version uh, feature okay next question what are the ticketing tools in the project so jira is the ticketing tool that uh, we are using okay next question does get command work on web ui uh no that get command uh, do not work in the web ui so actually the get command is uh, the command that uh, that will uh, give it on the snow sql or any other uh, sql uh, jdbc odbc client uh, to copy the data or to download the data to our uh, local system so by using uh, if you wanted to work with the get command we have to install snow sql or some jdbc or odbc uh, sql cli uh, web ui uh, directly we can't use uh, that one